Here we are once again on the Langattic Escarpment, on the tram line, the fantastic tram line that in its heyday was like the M4 of South Wales. This was just absolutely bustling and full of people, full of men pushing drams, women selling fruit, women selling just about everything actually, and this is what you could get on this tram line. The drams would be filled of limestone, nearly two ton, and the men would push that limestone all the way to Brim Mau. It would take a week pushing the limestone, getting more and more bow-legged as they go towards Brim Mau. On a Friday night, into Brim Mau they would go heavy, bow-legged, get their money together and actually hit the pubs. And even today, there's people in Brim Mau called Bow-Legged Barry, for instance, and people like that that still get the name. Not what we're here for today. Today, we're here for Eggless Vine, the stone chapel. Look at that fantastic chapel, full of myth, full of stories, full of truths, I should say, and full of natural history. Let's take a look. Up here high in the cliffs is the main entrance of Eggless Vine. Inside here is a very large chamber, which we'll see in a moment. Lots and lots and lots of things to see, lots of myths. And here we have bones, bones. Whose can these be from? There you go, nice bone, dog loves them. Have you ever seen such an exciting back passage to thrust yourself into? Let's go. Here we are deep in the bowels of Wales, hundreds of miles underground, wearing all a safety kit. But one thing this safety kit won't protect us from, and that's the Welsh dragons. Welsh dragons have resided in this cave for thousands of years and many battles have been fought between the dragons and the humans and various other animals from the surface. And one famous battle from hundreds of years ago with the Knights Templar was Sir Brent Durban was the knight in question. And he was in this very chamber fighting one of the last dragons at the time. Brent lay mortally injured on the floor of the cave. And as the dragon came in for the last fightful bite of his throat to finish him off, Brent thrust his sword up into the rib cage of the dragon. The dragon fell, threw his claws down, smashing into the side of the wall. And there today, that's what we have immortalized in the stone, is the last impression of one of the dragons that lived in this cave. Fantastic. In Eggless Vine, it's bats, bats, bats. The cave system is imperative for the life cycle of the bat. And in fact, the bat, bats have partially created the cave themselves. When two bats love each other very much, they go on out on an erogenous flight. Normally, around about the 21st of June, 6.30, 5, they will head to Clidach, the Clidach Gorge. And there, there's a place called Pul Akum. And it's a very deep pool that connects the cave system to the service. Above the pool, they will do a royal, very dignified flight and a dance and a mating session. And there, the bat spawn will get fertilized. The bat spawn falls from the bats, gets fertilized and drops into the pool and sinks deep, deep, deep underground. There it gets washed into the caves and there it will develop and the actual bat larva will hatch. The bat larva will make its way upstream through the caves and start gnawing away at the limestone. And here we can see damage done to the limestone by the bats and the bat larva, as the la larva gets quite large, it's done some quite big teeth and bite marks in all this. And in fact, they enlarge the cave system themselves as they make their way up, 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 boring through the limestone, high up into the cave where they will form a chrysalis. And that chrysalis will stay there for four, five, maybe six years until it hatches out into a beautiful bat. Now the bat, when it hatches, is slightly Slightly purple, I would say, not black. And it only goes the pure black bat after the first full moon. Fantastic. 
Here we are, deep in the bowels of the earth, in the main chamber. And this is one of the places where many rituals were held over the years, one of which was how to dispel whooping cough from your child. Obviously, whooping cough in your child, as everybody knows, is an evil spirit. Maybe the devil, who knows? So how would you dispel that? You would grab your child forcibly by the ankles, spin him round as fast as you can, and you would throw out the spirit from the child into the side passages of the cave, and that's where the spirit would stay. Fantastic. I do think we've gone deep enough into the cave today because as, as we head down, we find this, which is a, um, a calcited dragon's tongue. And it's a small dragon, I'll give you it's a small dragon, but with his small dragons, there could be large dragons. What happened to this poor beast, I don't know, but I do think it's, it's probably time to get out of here, I think. <clears throat> That's it for part one at Beglas Vine and part of the 400 mile cave system of South Wales. I really do hope you learned something today. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and learn a little bit more next week. Don't forget, every week just learn a little bit and a little bit and eventually we'll know it all. Well, have a good time and I bid you farewell from South Wales.